And thanks, Seema, for putting on such a great event on something so important as diversity and inclusion, and it's a massive subject. Quick background to me, I have quite a varied background, a portfolio career, if you like. Um, in the late 90s, I qualified as a SEMA accountant, um, and I remember hundreds of years ago, people saying to me, you don't look like an accountant. Okay, what does an accountant look like? And I used to quite enjoy that. Over sort of the 20 years, I moved from accountancy into finance, into commercial finance, and my last sort of employed job was working um, with customer segmentation and data insights with using social media data and it was quite cool. But it was at that job that I had my epiphany where I was surrounded by some of the best uh, business minds, the board of directors to die for, this very exciting set of data, yes I know that sounds geeky but it was, billions of connections around the world through Twitter about how people relate to each other. And we were looking at that from a customer point of view. And we also had this awesome group of data scientists who were young, enthusiastic, um, they were looking at the machine learning, they were looking at programming, uh, and they actually blew me away. This should have been the most exciting job. It was an entrepreneurial organisation, it was really exciting, it was going to change the way we looked at people, um, it was using this massive set of data, and yet I watched a divide start. And the divide was between the expertise and the experience of the younger people. And what happened was, the leaders started to stop listening. They weren't listening to the things that were being raised. They weren't even asking questions anymore, they were just telling. And this younger generation, the employees were sitting there, they lost their curiosity, they stopped asking questions, they stopped coming up with ideas, they just waited to be told what to do. And this was my first real experience of this energy that should be there absolutely deteriorated and it was the most demotivating place to work and I think it was because everyone thought it could be so exciting and so I left this and started looking just at people and people's behavior and so Hello Tomorrow works with organizations to harness the power of connection between people as a catalyst for growth through mainly relationship building and so this is where my passion for reverse mentoring comes from. It's been around hundreds of years actually, or not quite hundreds of years, but feels like it. Um, and the, it started with senior executives needing to understand how to use technology better and talking to younger people who helped them. That in itself has become putting young people in a box. Most young people that I work with, have, some have a passion for technology, but it's just part of their life. They're not technology wizards, it's just their life. So to assume that all young people are going to be able to know how to use LinkedIn better than me, again, is another judgment and assumption. And what reverse mentoring actually is, in my, my world, is exchanging experiences. Mr. Senior Executive, if you want to listen to this young person, they'll give you a different perspective on this challenge than you have currently thought of. And by the way, that you can't possibly have thought of because you don't know what it's like to be 22 anymore. It's a different world. And so it's all about breaking down the barriers and perceptions and it's all about building connections with people that are unlike you to bridge those gaps across the different networks. So there's this huge opportunity in organisations today when leaders learn to bring difference together and see it as an opportunity, not as a duty. It's this togetherness that sparks the growth of organisations.